All right, second Brotherhood deck this week. This is the Greyjoy Brotherhood. House Greyjoy, the Brotherhood without banners. What was I going to say? Oh, unfortunately having to make this video later in the day because the Iron Throne was jacked up earlier today. I don't... It's not still going on. I just tested a game. But yeah, like, people could not make or create or join games earlier today. It was totally messed up. Hopefully it'll work now. If not, I'm going to be triggered because I will have already recorded like 10 minutes talking about the deck and then I won't be able to use the video for anything. So, this is... It has some things similar to the Baratheon one. Obviously, there's more blue cards in here than there were. Mustard, is that the right uh, term? I guess yellow? Oh, yellow's Lannister, right? More There's more Greyjoy cards in this deck than there were Baratheon cards in the other deck, I think. Um, although maybe not by that much. I think I had maybe more locations that were Baratheon. Anyways, you guys don't care about that. So yeah, you've banned all of your most broken cards from Greyjoy out of the deck by playing it this way. Uh, well, you can still have We Do Not Sow and Risen from the Sea, but there's no Euron, there's no, well, there's no Seven Cost Victorion, no Drown God Fanatic. So since there's no Drown God Fanatic, I went for the consistency of trade routes. You could go for uh, the stupid guy that lets you ambush Pinch of Powder. But that's less consistent. It's kind of a win more strategy. And let's be honest, that's just lame. Who wants to do that? So we're doing trade routes. Um, we have a very similar character lineup to the Baratheon deck in terms of neutral characters. But there's no Walter Frey or Freys. So that's the major difference. Because instead I can sub in Victarion as another sort of big renowned dude. So the factions that have, like, good, strong, non-loyal 6 or 7 cost characters that I can include uh, probably won't have the Frey stuff, because I don't want to put it in every single deck. Like, uh, Tyrell with Randall Tarly probably won't have it. But uh, Lannister uh, certainly will when I get to that deck next week. Then I tossed in the good non-loyal characters from Greyjoy. I'm not sure how Varamir made it into this deck, but not the Baratheon, but somehow that happened. But yeah, I mean, he's fine for a uh, Brotherhood deck. Also the Corset Littlefinger. I guess these guys were able to come in because they weren't getting crowded out by, like, Frey Lordlings. Uh, we have Murimur, Newly Made Lords. Only have, I would prefer to have three of these, but I think it's fine to only have two. Uh, I've got the Nighttime Marauders. That's a really strong card for a Trade Routes deck. I've got the Most Devout and uh, Barrack and, what's his name, the other one? Mance Raider. All that good stuff. Got the Corset Aeron. This is non-loyal, and he has a useful ability. Randomly reviving Asha or something can trigger the opponent. Corset Asha. Still better than the 6-cost box version of Asha, because there's not really enough Ironborn in here for the stealth to go through. Plus, we're not playing... Uh, what is that card? The Nilir Faction to target kill. The Seastone Chair, that's it. There's no Seastone Chair, because Seastone Chair is a faction Neil. And that would be a reason to go for, like, mass stealth. And otherwise, this Corset Asha is just better. Still have Risen's because blocking Valar is that important. And I think there's barely enough Greyjoy characters to get away with it. To get away with still using the Risen's. Bodyguards and Milks. Uh, we've got the Statue of Baylor, the Hollow Hill. I looked through the Greyjoy locations, and there's really not that many that stand out as actually being that good when they're not powering uh, broken cards that need warships. But Great Kraken is still good, and you can give stuff stealth to make sure that you trigger it. And Night Flyer is probably like an automatic one of in any Greyjoy deck. Uh, got At the Gates, Confiscation, to get rid of that pesky milk. Hopefully we have an extra safety blanket with uh, We Do Not Sow. Originally I had Nothing Burns like the Cold over Counting Coppers, but let's be honest, having a draw plot is just more important. This deck can actually use exchange of information, six attachments, six events. I still went for counting coppers because I want to draw characters. I really just want to always have characters in hand in case of resets. And exchange of information doesn't really accomplish that. But it could potentially be fine since you are Greyjoy with six saves, so you should have a pretty sticky board. Exchange might be acceptable. But what you don't want is like when you don't have enough characters in hand, and you want to draw characters with your plot, and then you try exchange, and they just give you... Well, I don't have the little reducer guys in here, but they just give you, like, a Lord's Port ship, right, or whatever. That's not really okay. So that's why it's counting coppers. Then we've got the Valar and the broken plot. So let's play a game. 
Probably better than the Baratheon one just because it's Greyjoy. I mean, Greyjoy is just better than Baratheon, but not by that much once the, uh, the OP characters are banned out of the deck and they can't be used. We Do Not Sow is still a really strong card, though. Uh, this, with the threat of we take Westeros to then steal whatever you discarded, makes it really hard for the opponent to use stuff like White Tree. His is protected by House of the Red Door, of course, so he'll be fine this time around. But it's definitely some type of lame deck, and it might be a uh, six-cost wall, so we don't want to keep this hand. This is better. I want to set up Aeron or Theon. I mean, Theon's probably better, right? No riddle, don't do it. I don't have riddle in this deck because I want to play We Take Westeros because this plot's just way too broken. It was like riddles, what has to get the cut. Could also put it in over confiscation, maybe. But I really want to have this on deck when someone milks my Barrack Dondarian. Oh, nice. No, uh, no riddle. Oh, do I have any neutrals? I can still just give her Intimidate. Is it worth it? Probably not. It's not worth it. Not against uh, Nice Watch. Like, if I go first and Marshal Asha, then he gets to put Craven on her. And that's not really worth it. Oh, jeez. I guess I'll get an Iron Gate. Don't love this hand. Hopefully Asha can do damage. Late Summer Feast means either Builders or Six Cost Wall. I'm going to guess Builders. I think if it was a big wall, they'd start with March to the Wall. That's my guess. See, there's the Craven. He has to put it on Theon. That's not nearly as good as putting it on Asha. Begging brother, huh? Well, I don't like that, but there's no builders, there's no wall. So as long as the wall doesn't show up, use your begging brother. It's fine. <laughs> Vindictive Ranger. That suggests six cost wall. Vindictive Ranger, you would never put this in a builder's deck. It could just be something random, though. It might not actually be a coherent deck. It might be a random cards deck. Well, Asha's ability can get cancelled, which is really annoying. I still think it's the only worthwhile thing I can do with my turn. We save one for We Do Not Sow instead of Bodyguard. Um, do we want to give her stealth, probably? Yeah, let's go for stealth. He might just pass. Might do an intrigue. Yeah, three Intrigue Icons. I think it makes sense to do one. Don't get... Would you not so? You gotta be kidding me, man. That's one out of eight. One out of eight. I can't believe it. What? Why did I say a card? I should have, should not have said anything. It's incredible. That always happens to me. That's a big deal. That was going to be an underground vault gone for him. That matters a lot. Man, that's obnoxious. 
It's obnoxious, dude. It's just obnoxious. Uh, yeah, so we want to attack with Asha first. So this dude won't have stealth, and she goes past him. And then we attack with uh, Ghost of High Heart. Although I guess he can just give the Vindictive Ranger an Intrigue Icon in stealth, so what difference does it make? He's sitting on three gold. That's a little bit suspicious. Why is he sitting on three? I mean, maybe he just had an awkward hand. I gave Ghost of High Heart stealth only to try to activate We Do Not Sow. Really doesn't make me happy. He killed the begging brother. You sure you want to do that? That dude still had a gold on him. You didn't want to kill Samuel Tarly? Interesting choice. Mag the Mighty. Mag the Mighty. Well, no Mag the Mighty for you. Probably a Last of the Giants card. Fortunately, it seems he did not have that event available. Alright, so it's either Confiscation or Trade Routes. I don't actually care that much about the Craven on Theon at the moment. So let's just do trade routes. Set up some locations. Like, it's okay that he has Craven because Asha is a threat and can do work. Valar Doharis. To make me get rid of a Theon that has Craven on it. That's a really bad Valar Doharis. Definitely not when you want to do that, especially in the trade routes. Like, what are you doing? Like, I understand that he might feel like he has to do something because he has no answer to Asha, but it's, that's still not correct. Good thing I didn't play Confiscation. This is a great thing about Brotherhood. I don't necessarily mind him making me first, because now I'm going to use Intimidate on him. It's pretty dope. Alright, we're definitely playing Maester Moore and Muir, because he cancels Underground Vault. Playing a Bodyguard. Cancel that. Uh... What was I going to do next? Oh yeah, we definitely need to do this. The rat cook, when I woke. Why didn't he use this? Could've used this on Asha last turn, right? I don't understand. Recruiter for the watch. Another begging brother. And Yorin. Okay. Let's play the Hollow Hill. Yeah. The rat cook. 
but I'm seeing a lot of rangers. Vindictive Ranger, Ranging Party, Sir Waymar Royce. Not really seeing enough stewards for the Rat Cook. This is cost, right? I'm like 90% sure the Rat Cook is cost. Yeah, printing cost. So you can't use that. That's good. That's one nice thing for me. I don't have very many two cost characters in this deck. In fact, I think the only ones are Angui. And the Lord's Port Shipwrights is what it looks like. Yeah, because I'm Greyjoy, so I can get away with playing only big characters, and I don't have to care about board attrition because I have six saves in my deck. One of them being an on-demand save. Alright, now we know he has When I Woke in his hand, so we're not going to do a military with Asha. Let's do power with Asha first. So this way it's guaranteed unopposed, then we do military with Nighttime Marauders. And you don't want to put these on top of the deck, because then I guess you use the ability again, after having seen your hand. I don't think he should have defended that. There's no we do not so. I mean, I have zero gold. Okay, I'm fine with this. Unless he somehow discards it off the top of my deck. I am completely fine with what he just did. Waste of the Vindictive Ranger. No need to defend that challenge. Like, he's definitely going to block this Intrigue, so now he won't get to do a power, because he didn't have the Vindictive Ranger available to block this Intrigue. He could have done, like, Vindictive Ranger, Samwell to block it, then he does Intrigue power, both unopposed. Now he only gets Intrigue. I guess he wouldn't have gotten both, because you'd have to, like, kill Sam for a uh, military claim instead of the Ranger. But still, it would have been better. Would have been better. Did you forget that it has Intimidate? If you were going to do that... I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I don't know what the opponent's doing. He might be on a different level that I'm not on. He's just figured some stuff out that I don't know about. That's always possible. Alright, let's get something good here. Show me a big boy. This dude's not going to be very happy if I hit him with a Victorion. Oh no, this shuffles my deck. Oh well, it's still worth it. I mean, I can guarantee that I get the Nighttime Marauders with this if I really want it that bad. What do I want? Begging Brother? Nighttime Marauders? Probably 
either Begging Brother or Bronze Yawn. Probably this guy. Just go ahead and get a Renown guy, and then just hope we draw Begging Brother and Nighttime Marauders. I don't want to discard any of these. Goodness, do I not. I think the discard is, I guess, Night Flyer. Kind of sucks. It's like another trade routes. Nothing burns like the cold. Okay. Well, now we have a... How do you say? Oh, we take Westeros target. Totally fine to see a Night's Watch deck playing this. I'm going to cancel Underground Vault instead of White Tree. Because White Tree only gives him one. Underground Vault gives him two. Oh, man. Do we want Victorion or Bronzeon Royce? Doesn't really matter, does it? Let's go for this guy. Get some Statue of Baylor action going. Yeah, I like this line. Let's hope he didn't top deck another Craven. I think I'm actually going to let him have the underground vaults because it's possible he'll, that he's drawn the wall now. And there might not be a wall in that deck, but if there's a wall in that deck, I want Maester Morimir standing. I don't think the extra two gold is going to save him if he doesn't have some type of answer. He's probably not going to enjoy double intimidate with stealth on the first one. Darn, top deck milk. Well, that's why we play Confiscation. That was the wrong choice. But still a good choice. To be fair, all four of these are good choices. Sitting on four gold. Well, let's hope he doesn't have another when I woke. That's not going to make me very happy if he does that again. It's fine on nighttime marauders. I'm not going to appreciate it on Bronzeon Royce.
darn my Victarion. Unfortunate, but we had to eat that. There's no way I'm going to not attack because of it. Yeah, this is what happens when you put Brotherhood first. Bet you're regretting that right about now. I wonder if he has political disaster. I bet he does. Seems like the type of guy that would play political disaster. Ooh, an underground vault. I'll take that. Let's draw some cards in case of political disaster. Go ahead and use these. I don't know if I want to use the second one. This is an expensive hand again, now that I drew those two. So I think I'll save it. If he has political disaster, I'll be triggered. I think I'm going to go Confiscation. I don't know. If he does if he does Political Disaster, I really need to go for We Take Westeros this turn. Yeah, I think this is what I need. don't think discarding the milk is important compared to getting an Underground Vault. Holy shit, how did I know? I'm so good at this game. I kept Gates of the Moon, so his underground vault will give me five, even when he loses his Rose Road. I don't think it's a wall deck at this point. I'm going to hang on to my gold. Thank you very much. I think this might be a begging brother turn. Yeah, this is begging brother. Hopefully he has the Valar now. Let's see what he has.
the high sparrow. This dude's going all in on this stuff. I wonder if he realizes that that actually affects him. I'm not sure if it kicks in this turn because he knelt the underground vaults first and then played him. Yeah, no, because he collected all his gold and then played him. He's playing Cunning Steward. What is going on? It doesn't look like a Valar. Well, like, next turn, if he plays uh, any plot above three gold, he won't be able to gain all his gold off of it. Too bad for him he didn't get this guy when I was doing trade routes, huh? All right. Now it should be pretty brutal because he can't cancel Asha with that begging brother anymore. Oh, but this guy gains icons. That's frustrating. No way to get unopposed then. That sucks. Yeah, we still just have to do this. Oh, he lost a duplicate. Do you know that I'm Greyjoy? Do you know that Valar Morghulis is in my plot deck? You're going to miss that duplicate later on. So this makes yet another turn where I win three challenges and he wins zero. I guess I'll take it. There's no way he's going to Valar right now, so I'm going to go for Confiscation. Imagine if he had Valar Doharis available and hadn't wasted it to get rid of Theon Greyjoy with a Craven on him. He could definitely be in a better position right now. Off the goal town, that's kind of random. Nope. No three-finger hob this time, buddy. Absolutely not.
Breaking ties? No! <laughs> Breaking ties? Come on, dude. That's just rude. Who plays that card? That's not a very good card to be going up against his brotherhood. How did I only get one off that underground vault? Four plus one should be five. Right? This is a four gold plot. Ah, the high sparrow. Four plus two plus two. That's why. Figured it out. He high sparrowed me. But again, when he collects gold, he's only going to get three when he should have gotten five. So it actually lost him more gold than it did me. Well, I guess it's a begging brother this turn. This looks like the Valar Morghulis turn because he's going to bounce Bronze Jan Royce and begging brother. And then I'm going to play Valar Morghulis. So let's definitely play a bodyguard. Either Aeron or... Let's just put it on Aeron. So we can let Asha die if there's Valar, and then he has to worry about Aeron reviving her. One for We Do Not Sow. And a Begging Brother. We're going to put Intimidate on Ghost of High Heart to spread out uh, the bounce targets. If we put it on any of these three, it gives him a really efficient bounce. Because he really wants to bounce Begging Brothers and Bronze Yom Royce anyways. Like, this guy's getting bounced no matter what. If I put Intimidate on a Begging Brother, that card is probably getting bounced. If I put it on Ghost of High Heart, it gives him more of a harder choice to make. Recruiter for the watch as an actual two strength entry guy con character. That feels bad. Sorry, I just don't have a lot of little guys in my deck. So since Bronzeon Royce doesn't have Intimidate this time, I'm just not going to attack with him. Let him sit there to defend with uh, Gates of the Moon. Bounced Asha. Not unreasonable. Good thing we put the bodyguard on Aeron then. I wasn't actually thinking about that, but that's another reason to put it on Aeron. Now it stays in play. Could just pass. Might be the correct thing to do. Yeah, it's too easy for him to defend against Intrigue with Ghost of High Heart by herself. So we'll throw in a Begging Brother and then pass. Maybe attack with Aeron to make him either defend or get hit with We Do Not Sow. That could be a thing. Off the goal town. All right, then.
his own insight got blocked by uh, the High Sparrow there. Because off the goal town drew him his third card, and then he couldn't draw another one off Samwell's insight. It's funny. If he wants to bounce Bronze Yarn Royce, he's gonna, he's just gonna do it. So I might as well attack and force him to do it. Like he can just do it in dominance phase or something. Not gonna bounce him? Wow. You don't want to sack Samwell Tarly? This dude's useless. You didn't even draw a card off the inside this turn. Maybe he's gonna be big brain and use Sam to bounce his own begging brother. That would be a smart move. Oh no, he just killed it for claim. Well, that's not happening. Are you going to use it on Begging Brother? Really? You put Begging Brother back in my hands, and you leave a Bronze Yon Royce with three power and a bodyguard on the board. That doesn't make any sense. Thanks for saving it from Valar Morghulis, I suppose. Damn, that was going to save Maester Morimir. Still going to Valar. I should have stood Bronze Yarn Royce to win dominance with Statue of Baylor. That was a misplay. Three Finger Hob disabled by the High Sparrow. Again, good job. Like, I don't even want a Valar on this board, but if I don't do it this turn, I have to do it next turn. And this is going to be the best turn to do it. I wonder if he knew I was going to Valar, or if that's just sheer luck. I'm going to lean towards Luck, because he's made a lot of other questionable plays, but it's possible that he just got me. Super lucky discard that he took the Risen, which could have let me just uh, absorb it with Morimir. Now that March actually kind of hurts. At least he only gets one gold off these underground vaults. I think that's how this is going to work. Yep, only one. Guarding the realm. Soul Aeron? That's a pretty crappy steal. Was that the only option? Yeah, he must not have a very good hand if that's what he had to do this turn. Burning the dead. Yeah, that seems... <laughs> burning the dead. It's not great, man. I guess he really doesn't like Desert Raider. I have to think, do I want Asha or Light Hagen's daughter? It could be his Valar Morghulis next turn. 
In that case, I want Hagen's daughter. So have this guy gain insight. Doesn't really matter this turn. I want to draw some more damn economy locations. I haven't drawn a single Rose Road this game. Only one Great Hall. That was calculated. You guys see what I did there? I didn't say we do not sow, and you didn't get it. Figured it out. He shouldn't make this attack. He's not thinking about Bronze Yon Royce's ability. It's just giving me another power and another card draw for no reason. This dude does have an ability. He's typically just a 6-5 Renown with blank text, but he actually does have an ability if people are dumb enough to forget about it. Milk would have been a good draw, like any turn except this turn. Guess I can just win on unopposed and, and renown at this rate. Well, we drew a rose road. That's handy. We can never pay for mats, and this guy's card choices have been extremely questionable, so Nighttime Marauders is not as valuable as it would be against a deck that's actually playing only good cards, instead of playing things like Burning the Dead. Return to the Fields, sure. You really didn't reveal this last turn? I guess if he knew I was going to Valar, it's arguable what would be better, Return to the Fields or Marched. So this was a game where counting coppers ended up being bad. Definitely would have been better. I don't know, nothing burns wouldn't have been great this game, because I would have ended up having to discard my own statue of Baylor. But that's due to a very weird situation. That doesn't, you know, you don't normally run into someone that's this committed to uh, White Tree and not playing any other limited locations. Alright, let's play this guy. Yeah, let him kneel the vault. Uh, I guess it's Lim Lemon Cloak. Yep, looks like it. Alright, if he doesn't show me this something this turn, then I think I can just win. Darion. You did play... There's one song event. Oh, that's what I get for marshalling my two-cost character. I guess I wasn't supposed to do that. The rat cook.
Looks like the opponent has now stalled out and has no idea what to do next. Looks like he wanted to use his Lordsport shipwright that he stole to kneel statue of Baylor, which is probably the right thing to do. But he hasn't done it, and he's not doing anything else. If he doesn't have a military icon, I think he's just dead no matter what. Because I can give Lim Lemon Cloak renown, and then get unoppo unopposed plus two renown. I actually don't even need the double renown, just unopposed power claim and bronze yon's uh, printed renown. Hmm, he says. Will the opponent ever take another action? Why? Can I kneel? I'm sure he's asking why can't I kneel? I'm not sure why he can't kneel. He should be able to. Alright, this is just silly. I'll just do it for him. I don't know what's going on. That has to be a bug. If he actually couldn't use the ability. I can't think of anything that would be stopping it. Deal Lord's Port Shipwright to choose a Neil location with printing cost 2 or lower. I legitimately don't know. Alright, this doesn't matter because I'm just going to win. Uh, well, we know that he plays off to Goal Town. And giving Lim Renown makes me win, even if he plays off the goal town. We have to do it this way. So this way, if we attack with both Renowns on military and he plays off the goal town, we only get two Renowns, and we're, we stall at 14. This way we win, even if he has off the goal town. But it looks like he didn't have it, so we just win. He conceded. We got there. Uh, so you can see the reason why I said I'm happy to see Night's Watch playing uh, Nothing Burns Like the Cold. And, you know, not having a wall in his deck and stuff like that. Oh, he complimented me. Wow, that's so nice. Because as you can see here, while he was able to be very annoying, he didn't have an actual win condition. He could only sit there and just slow me down as much as possible, but he never had anything on his side that threatened to hit me. I had Mag at the end. I never saw Mag. I mean, I guess he was in the hand. He was going to do uh, Last of the Giants, maybe. But that wouldn't have been enough. I would go save, uh, kill here, save, go to Shadows. Wouldn't really matter. All right, well, it's late, and I have to start my job tomorrow, so I'm just going to peace out, I guess. Yeah, I am starting a full-time job tomorrow, so if I, like, end up posting less or just stop posting, that's why. Hopefully it won't matter, but I sort of have to, you know, go through my first week or two and see how badly it's going to screw me over. And if it screws me over, I'll probably make a video announcing that. But if I just keep posting and nothing changes, then it didn't matter. Hopefully it won't matter.